This is Sean Conway's final lap of his epic, almighty Iron 102 challenge. Let's see how he got to this point. For the last 101 days, Sean Conway has been completing an iron distance triathlon every single day. That's a 3.8 kilometer swim, a 180 kilometer cycle, followed by a 42.2 kilometer run every single day. Now you might be wondering why? Well, Sean is currently attempting to break the world record for the most long distance triathlons completed over consecutive days, which currently stands at 101 days all in the name of charity. Now, like us, you're probably wondering, how is this even possible? Well, we came to Sean's last day, day 102, to not only see Sean, break the record and chat to him, but to speak to the team that have been around Sean from day one, to find out exactly how much planning goes into breaking a record of this scale, starting with his daily schedule. I arrive at Mould Leisure Centre at uh, about quarter past four in the morning. So I'll take in his swim clothes, his bike clothes, and his morning food, so food for the swim, and also any food that needs to be set up um, for the bike ride. So I'll set up his drink bottles um, with his energy drinks and water, whatever he decides. I'll lay out two cubicles. So we have a wet cubicle and dry cubicle. So obviously your swim kit goes in one, um, so where you can put all the swim kit on and when he's done with the swim he takes his wet kit off and he moves into the dry cubicle where I've hung up and laid out all of his bike kit or any kind of knee tape or anything that he requires for the day um, and I'll probably go on from there uh, and also I'll set up the bike as well at poolside and make sure it's mechanically ready I'll make, a, make sure uh, the computer's working and the power pedals are actually picking up as well. Uh, we then take him out onto the, onto the bike section uh, and then hopefully there's a group of riders there to meet him, to take him out uh, down towards Holt. Once um, he's then on the move, uh, we pack up all the kit at, at the centre. Uh, it takes normally around about 20 minutes. Then we are straight down to Holt to set up the feed station, uh, ready to rock and roll there. The, the ride then ends up in Queensbury where he starts the run. So tr the transition again, quick as possible. Um, sometimes if it's a particularly wet day, then he would jump in the shower, um, get a quick change, eat his food, and then off he goes onto the marathon. Um, and again, it's amazing that the people which have come to support him, the runners, uh, people from all over the place which have come. Um, we've had our regulars each week as well, which is, which is amazing. Um, so many people have done numerous PBs as well, um, which is, you know, the th their furthest, their fastest. Um, but it's been a nice steady pe pace for people to, to join him on the run actually. Um, so yeah, he normally finishes the run around about seven-ish, um, depending, it has been getting obviously a little bit later and later as the numbers have gone, gone up. Um, and then he, when he gets home, so he's home around about half seven, and then this is the crunch point for me. If I've not got the kids in bed <laughs> before half seven and they see daddy, oh my God, it's really obviously very lovely for Sean to see the, to see the kids, but um, that means that they're kind of up for another couple of hours. So and then he is kind of does the dad time. So um, he, you know, on occasions he's been outside in the garden playing football with the boys. Um, and he's, you know, been reading stories, he's helped with bath time. Um, sometimes we're sitting eating a dinner together um, uh, in the evening and then um, he basically eats his food, has a bath, um, physio, uh, and then uh, bed. Wakes up, does it all again. <laughs> Russ! Hi Russ! Hey! Cool. So Russ is a, a relative local to the area aren't you? Correct! And this is, you've joined three, four times? Three times, this is the third time with Sean. Third time with Sean and you are just, like many people here, just an uber Sean fan right? Absolutely, yeah mate, it's a local ride, long ride, the like triathlons, yeah. good opportunity to train. And what do you think to his effort here? Absolutely amazing. Fantastic. Finally caught some of the main man. What a 
the motion today. I mean, it must be, it must be on cloud nine. Just wanted to get this one done. Yeah, actually, like muscularly, I feel amazing. <laughs> it's like I wish I felt like this for the other hundred and one days. I mean, I got, I got asked how, like, how do you train for something like this? This is nuts. It's hard. You've got to put hours. I did three sessions of everything a week. Three swims, three bikes, three runs. Um, I should have done more of really was just some back to back runs, long runs like 30 milers, and the same on the bike. I should have done a whole week of bike packing before this. Um, maybe I should have done five in a row, maybe six weeks out. Because really, if I'd got injured on those, I wouldn't have been ready for day one anyway. Well, you know for next time now. Hey? Yeah. Well, if anyone else wants to. Or anyone else, yeah, yeah. it's definitely not going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I mean, one thing that's. Uh, I, I mean, how long you're out here each day? Are you getting much sleep? I am. Now I'm getting sleep. In the beginning, I was getting five hours, four hours. But every day I was hustling for minutes. Hustle, hustle, hustle. And now, uh, yeah, I'm getting eight hours now. Wow. It's an unnegotiable for me now. Yeah. Sleep. Take sleep. Eat quickly. Go to bed. You know, I, I chose sleep over physio at around day 30. And uh, I still see physio once a week, which I need, but just sleep. Sleep and lots of Obviously, recovery is a huge part of challenges like this. So we spoke to Sean's physiotherapist, Simon, to find out what Sean's recovery process looks like. So really from the beginning, the recovery has been um, a tricky aspect to sort of get on top of. There's only one other person in history that has done an event like this. So first of all, we looked at what he did and decided that wasn't really for us in terms of time and sleep. So what we ultimately decided upon was to prioritize sleep. So from the start, from day one, we wanted to make sure that sleep was at the forefront of our minds to make sure he got his optimum recovery. So we had uh, treatment at the end of each and every evening. So what that entailed was as soon as Sean got in, typically around 7, 7.30, that we, what we did was we uh, did a quick assessment, musculoskeletal assessment, and made sure that joints and muscles were okay. But obviously in the first couple of weeks, there was a lot of stress and strain on the body. So there was a lot of uh, potential injury that could have happened. And to mitigate that in the first couple of weeks, we did make sure we had treatment planned for 40, 45 minutes each evening, and not to go over that to make sure that Sean had the best possible recovery. So that typically entailed massage, stretching, and anything else that he needed within that time. And within the first couple of weeks, it was tricky trying to manage that. Um, there was a lot of demand for not just me, but also former graduates to help me out in that sort of plan. And what we managed to do was, was um, in the first couple of weeks, he had issues with knees and niggles. And with that, what we had to do, if you see him running around today and throughout his challenge, he's had straps on his knees because he suffered with various knee problems and also hip problems. So with the 45 minute massage, that really helped him. But at the beginning, it was, um, eating too much into the evening so after the first four weeks we decided to cull it and prioritize just to one day a week which, which was just the Sunday. Um, as we got over the first four weeks what we noticed was that he was um, starting to develop further issues in the knee and the hip so what we did was in terms of his recovery and management was to actually incorporate rehabilitation exercises during his run uh, so every hour We'd stop him on his run and the crew uh, were fully buyed into this, uh, bought into this. So what we did was we were focused on glutes, on um, hips and also on the main, the main muscles to sort of protect him. And by addressing those, we were able to keep on top of those different issues throughout, the, throughout and eventually made us today 102. But it's been tricky. So there's a cumulative effect. So there's obviously the fatigue element. So he's going to be having a lot of physiological stresses throughout the body. And the main thing to deal with that physiological stress is rest. And the rest in that comes in the form of sleep. So that's why we prioritize sleep uh, from day one. So if treatments couldn't go longer than 40 minutes. So in terms of that as well is making sure that his nutrition is optimal as possible, just to make sure that his body is addressed in the best possible way to make sure he can continue running as best he can.
After spending a little time with Sean and his team, it's apparent that they have a very well-oiled machine here. They have their daily routine dialed and everyone in that team is instrumental. Through trial and error, they have figured out the best routine and practice to make sure that Sean is recovering and ready to go day in, day out. But one very big part of that puzzle is also the nutrition. With the iron distance stuff uh, on, a, on a solo, um, you'd be looking at working quite hard um, over that period of time. Sean's really lucky in this that he's got a group of riders in front of him, so his, his heart rate's really low, his power's really low, so um, he's very, very fat dominant. Um, so a lot of the food choices that we make are based around fats rather than carbohydrates. Um, and that's one of the main fuel sources that he's running off. Mainly we try and look at as much whole food as possible. Um, so we're trying to keep it as, as solid as possible. Uh, Sean doesn't really get on with gels that much. Um, and so we've, we've kind of refined it over, over a couple of days. Um, and we've sort of got to a point now where there's a lot of fruit, uh, a lot of vegetables, um, lots of uh, dairy and, and high calorie stuff really to make sure he can get the calories in. Uh, with, the, with the run, we try and have more easily, um, easily digestible foods. So um, we tend to have more, more whole foods on the bike and then on the run, go for more liquid, liquid form. Um, so we have a lot of uh, electrolyte drinks, uh, carbohydrate, protein mix in drinks as well. He eats a lot of bananas and crisps and bars as well. So I guess when, we're, when he's eating on the run, he's not just thinking about that day and to get to the end of that day, he's thinking about fueling for the next day as well. So once we get onto the run, we're already thinking about tomorrow. So it differs a little bit from a, from a normal Ironman where you can kind of aim to peak and be absolutely broken at the end of the day. Uh, with this one, he needs to be relatively okay and you know, on his way to fueling up for the next day as well. So finished the bike. Everyone's just getting changed quickly. Sean's grabbing some food, then we're gonna head out on the run. Now I barely did 130K, so not even the full 180. Didn't even do a swim this morning. I'm actually feeling it a little bit. Sean's had to do this for 102 days. Look at my neck. I'm not even sure I'm gonna join for the full run. Mental. Give me what you got. <laughs> this is my, this is my sprint at the minute. <laughs> We're gonna go for a fast as well. Oh, okay, oh, this is it. Mate. This is it. This is the one. <laughs> Um, also, can you tell me a little bit about True Ventures? Because we haven't actually talked about it much today. Uh, obviously, there's a big reason behind why you're doing all of this. Yeah, I mean, when I had kids, I just sort of was trying to get them into sports class and things like that. And there was a, a local swim class, and I'd love to get a place in the local swim class. And so, you know, when I found out about True Ventures, just trying to get kids in sport, I was just like, right, that's it. I really want to raise uh, money for them to, you know, provide facilities and coaches and training camps and equipment just so that kids can stay in sport because since COVID, just in Wales alone, there's 66,000 fewer kids doing sport outside of school. It's only at 39%. You know, 39% of kids do sport outside of school. Yeah. It's terrible. And so how can someone watching this help out that cause even after you finish the attempt? Yeah, I mean, if you want to donate some money, that'd be amazing at trueventure.org.uk. Uh, and all the money will go directly, 100% of everything. I'm volunteering with True Venture indefinitely. Pretty much, I really believe in what they do. So Brilliant. I'm going to go and do school talks and things like that. Try and get them into 
kids excited about sport and then provide actual avenues because it's very well like there's a lot of people who go in and get them all excited yeah but then there's sort of nowhere for them to go after that yeah so yeah treeventure.org at uk or you know just get your kids if you're a parent out there and uh your kids aren't you know doing sport outside of school trust me if you kind of just push them in the right direction and give them a bit of confidence it'll just work wonders for them so uh awesome and i also hear you're auctioning off your sweaty run tops <laughs> oh, yeah. also some nice stuff like bikes and yeah, stuff. yeah 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 if well, you want sean's sweaty run tops they are going to be available they're going to be available <laughs> yeah um will they get a wash um you get the option oh well, yeah there we go <laughs> washed or unwashed <laughs> <laughs> brilliant well yeah check it out um yeah brilliant cause great work sean okay. Now this was actually my first time meeting Sean and honestly he left such an incredible impression on me. This has to be one of the toughest sporting challenges I have ever witnessed and yet Sean was on day 102 still beaming with joy and positivity. His mental strength is clearly on another level but he was quick to point out to me that none of this would have been possible without his crew and supporters each day. Aside from the, the, the grueling daily uh, physical challenge, um, mental, he's very strong, he's very resilient. Um, when he has something in his mind, he won't let it go. That's it, he's focused, he goes for it. So, um, but yeah, physically, I think the, the hardest part for him, um, the hardest moment I think probably was kind of that first week. It was pretty tough for us all really, the crew and everyone. Um, I think on day two, he almost didn't make the, the cutoff of uh, 17 hours. Um, that was pretty low point. And he's going, you know, how, how I've trained so much, you know, what's happened, what's gone wrong. Obviously, kind of what, once those first couple of weeks got out of the way, he was then um, into his rhythm, into his stride. And uh, yeah, I think that, that was pretty hard. I, I think it's hard. He's missed out. feels like he's missed out on family life, you know, because whilst he's been doing his nine to five, you know, we've all been just getting on with life. The kids, you know, continue, they're in school. They have, you know, Monty had his fourth birthday, which is a big party, you know, so he's missed out on things, but it's only three months, you know, <laughs> the kids are for life, <laughs> so, um, you know. Um, but I think that's probably been his hardest, really. Um, and also, really, I think every day, certainly at the beginning, his biggest worry is there's not gonna be any riders. There's not gonna be any riders joining me, and that makes a huge difference, doesn't it, you know, on the timings. but. People have, they've turned up day in, day out, those regulars. It just means the world <laughs> for this, this challenge. Without them, um, he wouldn't have got anywhere near uh, finishing. I mean, these guys have given their own time. They've taken days off work. They've, they've given time between work and um, before work just to get him either to hear or to pass on to the next rider, the next group of riders. Uh, and the runners who've come out, it's like they finished their work days early to come and run. I mean, some of those guys, <clears throat> We've had people who've not run 10k before run a marathon with Sean, you know. But so, but they've given up their own time, and they never. They've also kind of their their way they think about what they can do in sport is increased astronomically. So without those guys, it'd be we wouldn't be here. So that's I'd just like to say thanks to them. One more lap to go. I believe so. We are ready to stop, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, we want to carry on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's right. <laughs> Very much ready to stop. <laughs>
Sean. Mate, congratulations. <laughs> so, so good. Honestly, it's so inspiring just being here for one day and following you. So much so, I actually only planned to do 10 kilometers of the run. And I'm like, oh, I can't stop if Sean's yeah. still going. <laughs> so, well, I was Thank really, you, really yeah, impressive. No. Um, first thing I've got to ask, what brought on this whole idea? So, when James Lawrence did the 50, I remember watching that and being like, whoa, I just, it blew my mind. And then, I don't remember the time frame, but I just, in 2016, I did the world's longest triathlon, which was 4,200 miles. And then I'd done a triathlon on the length of Britain as well. So sort of the next progression for me would be doing multiple full distances. And in 2018, I thought, oh, I wonder if I could do 100. And then I got married and had kids and then COVID and, and I sort of just put it at the back of my mind. And then when James did the 100, I was like, oh, he's done 100. I was like, oh, I wonder if I could do that. And it sort of, he re-inspired me really to see if I could push my own boundaries again. So that's sort of how it came back into my sort of world of consciousness after I'd forgotten about it in 2018. Um, and then, as you know, I did try this last year and that went terribly. <laughs> well, you learned a lot from it. Yeah, I absolutely. Guess, as well. uh, you know, my route was terrible. I was probably a little bit down on power on the bike. My run was pretty good, but the run route was pretty rubbish. Um, so I sort of fixed all that and just did it better this time, basically. <laughs> and I hear you and James, you've had a bit of correspondence, a bit of banter. Yeah, yeah it's been great. I, I remember in my training, I'd sort of put my FTP up and he's like, oh, well then, mate, you're as strong as my wife now. <laughs> <laughs> it was great, you know, and he's been super supportive and, uh, and, and that. So, uh, yeah, James, honestly, thank you for inspiring me. Honestly, I wouldn't have done it. If he had only done the, if he hadn't done the 100, you know, would I have done 100 or would I have stopped at 51? So he, you know, he set a super high bar for me and, and, and I like that. I like sort of the crazy hard challenges. Yeah. So. Now, and any big challenges along the way you faced? Weather's been terrible. Mm. Thank you, Wales. <laughs> um, that's been the hard one. Niggles, niggles seem to have changed. You know, my first big niggle was my left knee and my right knee a little bit, then my right shin, and then I had a shoulder issue, then I had a, a hip issue since day 65, and it really only sorted itself out about three or four days ago. I mean, it's amazing yeah. that it has at all, considering yeah. you just have not given your body time yeah, to recover. That's... I know, I, I, but I've been on it, on hydration, yeah. on not eating sort of inflammation foods, right. um, trying to stretch as much. My physio has been amazing. Whenever I have a problem, he's like, right, if, you know, for example, I had, there's a, a muscle down the front of your thigh here called the longus, and actually that's a lower back thing. Yeah. So if I loosen my lower back, it would release that nice, tension. Yeah. So it's, it's all learning things yeah, like that. Yeah. And um, But yeah, I mean, you've got to be on, you've got to tick, there's like 10 boxes you've got to tick yeah. every single day. And, and you touched on the physio, but I mean, yeah. you've got quite a support team around oh, you, which yeah. has made this all possible. And I, like, I witnessed that today yeah. and they're all pulling in and helping yeah. in different ways. And yeah. it, like, they're all really instrumental. I could see that. Oh God, yeah. I mean, in the morning, I just have to get to the pool. The pool's been opened. Uh, the water's been checked. Uh, I'd probably just swim in the water if it was cold anyway, <laughs> to be fair. Uh, we did have backup pools. We, had, we actually had three backup pools, just in case there was something wrong with the pool here, uh, which there never was. Um, but yeah, the boys were just amazing. You know, and, and Caroline, my wife, has also been amazing solo parenting for three and a half months. So she needs a award. I think she's going to do Iron 103 after this, I think, because... Yeah, have yeah. you got have you got to make it up at home Yeah, now? I need to. I'm on nappy changing duties for about three years, I think. I did hear a new Iron 102, but it yeah, was just, with the ironing board. Yeah, just ironing, yeah, for 103 <laughs> days. That's my job now. <laughs> no, awesome work. Um, yeah, I guess finally, I mean, I've, you were looking so good today. Oh, I mean, I does, like, the thought of carrying on, is that there in the back of your mind at all? I've been thinking about it a lot. Okay. And I don't know. You have to watch my Instagram tomorrow. Leave it there. So I'll either, I might be in bed, but. Well knows. done again. Thank you. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you much. very much. <laughs> well, as if 102 days wasn't enough already, Sean was amazingly back up and in that swimming pool at 4.59 a.m. the next day. And not just for one more day, Sean completed. 105 days in total an iron distance triathlon every day for one 
105 days. Well, here at GTN, we are absolutely blown away by this achievement. A huge congratulations to Sean, his family, team and supporters that made this all happen. If you would like to support True Venture, the charity that Sean has been raising money for, the link is in the description down below.